Welcome everyone to Denver Urban's Gardens monthly series of activities with young children. This time we're talking about for March, a good topic before the garden season starts, soil as the cycle of growth. These are our activities for young children. I'm Rob Peo, uh, the Director of Youth Education. It's my pleasure to join you today with my compatriot, my friend and my fellow, mm -hmm. fellow uh, uh, earth warrior, <laughs> earth goddess <laughs> on the planet, Jungle Judy Elliott. J Judy, welcome. Thank you. We're so glad you're here with us today to help us dig in the soil. Yes. That was a weird introduction to you. So, you know, that was very contemporaneous. So <laughs> anyway, as, as was my response. <laughs> yes, indeed. We're all about. yes, indeed. So <laughs> guess what we're going to talk about? We're going to be talking about soil today. We have lots of activities. We have some books and recipes, just like we always do every month. So I'm going to pass this over to Judy with a wonderful quote from the woman who wrote uh, Braiding Sweetgrass. Judy, go so, ahead. A little bit about Robin Wall Kimmer. She is an indigenous warrior, um, a professor, an ecologist, a lover of the earth, and a lover of cultural traditions. And Robin, not only is she one of my favorite people, my idol, but she is such an example of cultural humility and the connection of all of us to everything that is above and below the soil. And Robin wrote so beautifully, Knowing that you love the earth changes you. It activates you to defend and protect and celebrate. But when you feel that the earth loves you in return, that feeling transforms the relationship from a one-way street into a sacred bond. So if I were to translate what Robin is saying or put it, put it in my own words, I would say that um, we're looking at a relationship between not only how we impact or we have a bearing upon the earth, but how the earth is the source of nourishment and connection of all traditions and all wisdom. And it gives back food, but it gives back far more. So rather than when we work with the soil, it's really a feeling of celebration and it becomes a sacred family member that's filled with diversity and filled with non-judgmental learning. So let's begin by celebrating Robin's words of wisdom. And I'm looking at Robin's book actually is front and center, right next to my bed, always as many times as I've read it. And on the back cover, it says, she had said, only when we can hear the languages of other beings are we capable of understanding the generosity of the earth and learning to give our own gifts in return? So let's kind of enter into this <clears throat> celebration and this nurturing with open minds and open hearts. Judy, thank you for that beautiful introduction. And of course, Robin's words are so, so powerful. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I think it's warrants, I'm just having this, you know, intuitive feeling like uh, those of you that are been watching look at this quote and I invite you to type in the chat. So go into the chat. What words or what sections of this really speak to you? Because I've, I've looked at this quote, you know, I've seen this presentation over and over again, but when Judy actually read those words, Robin has such a powerful way of putting words together. So um, Judy, do you want to start us off? And, uh, you know, again, this is just an invitation. What words or phrased sections of this really speak to you? Um, well, it, rather than the words on the screen, I'm looking at relationships mm. and sacred bonds, because to me, it's, um, it, it's not only the seeds we plant, but it's our relationship to that soil, to that earth. And you notice I specifically did not say the word dirt but our relationship to that living organism above and below ground that provides me a feeling of holistic wellness. So it's relationships into, I'm not above anybody, I'm in co-relationship with the earth. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, co-relationship, I, I love that. The, the part that really stuck out for me was it activates you to defend, protect, and celebrate those three words mm -hmm. together. I mean, she just really has an economy of words and she, she chooses her words very carefully. 
Bev is saying the section, the earth changes you, activates you to defend the same thing into a sacred bond. That's interesting that we resonated with the same thing, Bev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that all of that together becomes a sacred bond. So if you haven't read uh, Braiding Sweetgrass, and I'll, I'll be totally transparent. I actually haven't, I haven't read it. I've only read sections of it. Uh, it's on my list of things to do. It's, it's, it, you know, the bits I've, I've read it is powerful. So. And um, while we're being transparent, I will be totally transparent too, and mention that there is a reason that this book and this book alone is on my bed stand right next to my bed. Um, I've probably read it about three or four times. Well, and here comes my old phone coming out again. Um, and I've, I've read it about three or four times because it resonates so deeply within me. So um, this is my favorite book of all time. Mm -hmm. So we've got lots of activities here. Judy, did you want to say anything about this? Yeah, I do. Thanks for reminding me. So when we're talking about soil, again, we're not talking about dirt. Because soil, as we go on, you're going to find out is just the basis of so much in thriving lives, not just what we can get out of a piece of dirt, it really has, it requires us to take actions that produce that thriving lifestyle. So a thriving soil really is equivalent to doing our best, doing our best, living our best lives. And it really does give us everything we need in life. Hmm. Did you have anything that you wanted to add, Rob? Nope. Nope, I'm good. And, and the quote underneath, I think, really says it all. This, this quote comes from an author by the name of Sharon Lovejoy, who wrote wonderful activity books, including Sunflower Houses and other things for, for kids. And Sharon came up with a quote, which, which is the soil is the plant's dinner. So if we're looking at the soil, what does it mean the soil is the plant's dinner? Well, if we get below the soil, which we're going to look into in a bit, we find that it's a living organism. It's not just static. It's got not only worms and roly polies, but it's got the air channels and earthworms. And if it's a, if it's a healthy soil, it promotes um, places for insects to lay their eggs um, and help with the aeration of the soil. A healthy soil helps us produce lots of food, not just food that is struggling, but food that can thrive without the addition of chemical additives or pesticides or even artificial fertilizer. And if you look at that soil, you can see how rich it is, not only in color, but you can see the channels, the air channels, which will promote deep rooting in the soil. So healthy soil um, allows, is rich with organisms that you can't see, bacteria and fungi. Healthy soil has got the ability to hold water. So a healthy soil that's enriched with compost can actually not only decrease your water bill by about 20%, but allow those roots to penetrate deep in the oil and the soil. And if the roots are penetrating deep in the soil, they're going to be able to access that water from really down deep in the soil, rather than you guys having to go out and water every day. Carbon storage, we all know about the release of greenhouse gases. We know about the plant cycle where um, plants take in carbon dioxide in order to grow and they release oxygen. And a healthy soil with a healthy root structure has got the ability to store carbon dioxide in the air, from the air. So it's not just releasing it. So healthy soil really is the cornerstone of not only the plant's healthy life, but the life that we get from that soil and those plants. Yeah. So let's jump into, thank you, Judy. Let's jump into some activities here. We've grounded ourselves. Did you see how I did that? We grounded ourselves. I, I did notice that <laughs> very well. So that said. we can appreciate soil for what it is. Um, and I'll take a moment uh, to welcome those of you that joined us uh, just now. If we have an interpreter with us. And so if you want to go to the Spanish channel, be sure to uh, uh, look on your menu. You may need to hover down at the bottom and click on the globe and go to the Spanish channel and uh, meet Miriam, who is interpreting for us today. Uh, I was recently in Chicago visiting my uh, sister and, and 
uh, her nieces, my, my, her dog and my grandniece had a birthday. And so we had a birthday party over at her house and, um, Pam said, oh, you might want to take a look at a book I have. This book, P.S., we made this as just a craft book with different ideas. And I found one, uh, a nice starter activity for us to think about. Memory rocks, uh, the memory rock games. And so basically you will paint things in your on, on flat, flat rocks in particular, put them in the garden for decoration, but also this suggestion of like having the same, you know, doing the memory game, the concentration game where you turn them over, you, uh, you know, and then have to flip them over to see which ones match which. So which one has the carrot, which wears its match, and then, you know, which one has the beat and which one has, you know, the artichoke. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, thank you, Blanca. So I guess we had some trouble getting on. So hopefully they'll be able to get on. Here's another activity. This is from our friends at Life Lab in California who have been getting, you know, inundated with, with rain and water. I hope you're doing well, well there, Life Lab. This is just a simple activity. You know, how many of you, when you were a kid, just lifted up a rock and looked underneath the soil and found, you know, grubs and roly polies and worms? It's just an automatic thing that kids are fascinated with as as we know so uh just to simply give them places and stations to look at different types of soil to give them tools to sort so we have a you know the, and this picture just sort of represents what the lesson is about having a, a place for kids to sort having kids a place to look under a micro magnifying glass having worms in in a in a soil bin from the garden from home and one from their school, for example. So it just engenders itself to having those opportunities to investigate, to ask questions and to wonder. Because this is an important thing, you know, we've disconnected ourselves in, in our modern society with those essential things that make, you know, life as it is. Uh, to forget how to dig the earth and to tend the soil is to forget ourselves, as Mahatma Gandhi has said. And so one of the things that's very important to us at Doug is to be able to have kids' hands in the dirt, to have that connection that we talked about at the beginning with Robin's quote of being able to protect, defend, and celebrate the soil and that sacred bond we have. Now, one thing before, Rob, if you could just go back to that slide. Yeah. Before. One of the things um, I'd like to point out that I, that I stress with this slide and the one that Rob showed before, which was about the, you know, investigating yep. this soil. That's all right. It's, it's lovely. Would be <laughs> not only do kids love to dig, but the fact that you allow them to wonder, yeah. and to not say, oh, you're getting dirty or anything like that, allows them to find as they're digging the soil that really the point in being in the soil is to ground yourself is to find a place of peace and of healing the investigation and the wonder is there mm -hmm. but also as they're picking up that wonderful soil they're finding the bits of rocks and you're able to insert lessons about you know soil really does come from rocks they're able to feel the difference between sand and clay and they're also able to find those little sticks that are part of the formation of soil so I think it's crucial that we put aside, if you will, our adult self that says it's too dirty, it's too messy, and allow kids to wonder and to sink their hands and to sink their feet into really what's going to grow them into a whole human being. Mm -hmm. And we encourage, you know, even in our community gardens, have a space where it's not for planting, it's just for a space, a wild space for kids to just, you know, dig in the dirt. And, you know, and in their minds, they may be thinking, oh, I'm gardening too, along with, you know, with uh, mom and dad and everything like that. But just to give them that opportunity to have that connection and that opportunity just to be with, with the earth. Yeah. And speaking of celebrating, huh. uh, uh, when I was an outdoor educator, this is one of the songs that I learned uh, uh, when I uh, uh, was a, a naturalist in California dirt made my lunch so we're it's from the banana slug string band those of you 
you that just joined us, if you need to, uh, if you need Spanish interpretation, be sure to push the interpretation button. It's the glow button there. Laura and Riley, welcome. And do sing along with me as we sing Dirt Made My Lunch. I've just I had the uh, a little section of it and you can sing along. I put the words here. So let's see if we can hear. Hopefully you can hear this. So tell me if you can hear the song, all right? Can you hear it? I cannot. Make your dirt, make some buns. So Milk of my lunch, cause I made my lunch. Yeah, I we, can't hear anything besides your beautiful singing, Rob. Yeah, we can't hear it either. <laughs> okay, I was having such a good time by myself, so <laughs> I'd have to go back in. Maybe I could do it later on, but uh, yeah, thank you for telling me. So I will sing it for you. Here we go. You didn't know you were going to get this. We're looking forward to and it. And Veronica, hola. I saw that you, uh, your message there. Hola, well, uh, uh, bienvenidos. Uh, dirt made my lunch. Do, 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 do. Dirt made my lunch. Thank you, dirt. Thanks a bunch for my salad, my sandwich, my milk, and my munch. Because what? Dirt, I can hear you sing. Dirt made my lunch. Ta -da. <laughs> There's a whole lot more to that song. So, so much for the audio. Sorry. Oh, I can hear it, but we're going to go on. So with that, I know you're just stunned by that amazing, you know, uh, piece of art there, the song. I, I, I mean, it's still, I, uh, it made me laugh when I was like, oh, yeah, we have to put that in here. Uh, let's do another activity, Paper Pots. You want to talk about this, Judy? Oh, sure. We have to do paper pots, which can be done many ways. You can do it the technical way. And that's that little apparatus, that, that wooden globe. You can also do it using um, a soup can or whatever you, whatever you can. So this is the, the essence of regeneration and of using, if you will, no pun intended, decomposable material that would normally end up in the landfill. So here we're using strips of newspaper. And if you look at that in step one, all we're doing is folding a piece that we're, we're tearing a strip of newspaper four or five inches in, in width. Um, and probably I use a half. If you look at a whole length of newspaper, I'll fold it in half and use half of that for length. So he's rolling or that person is rolling the newspaper around the bottom of this little figure type base until he gets to the end. And then he's basically scrunching the pieces of newspaper in at the bottom. Um, and then what he's doing in step number three is he's using that bottom piece that looks like a little saucer to put the newspaper and the top part of the stump and kind of scrunch it around, which seals the bottom. If you need to further seal it, I've used just some Elmer's glue. And you can see in step four, where he's pushing it in a little bit more. You can use some glue along the long edges and at the bottom, Elmer's glue is non-toxic. So again, you can use it with a can or a jar, a jelly jar, a small jar, jelly jar is a really good size. So you don't need to spend anything and it's a way of using what you have in, on hand. So um, starting seeds is big business and lots of people who go to a garden center think you need to spend lots of money on seed starting equipment and, and you really don't need to spend much at all. So kids absolutely love this activity. Um, I would encourage you if you do it at school, pardon me, to have extra jars around or to, to have other things to keep the kids busy because they all want to use this paper pot roller. It's wonderful. And then when the seeds grow, of course, you need to label everything. You can see there's a little tomato seed growing. What is wonderful about this method and something else we're going to show you is that you plant the whole pot in the garden. So you don't need to remove the seedling. And if there's things like algae, which is the green growth or a little mold that starts on it, you just want to make sure you give your pots a little bit of room when they're standing in a tray. You can also use a toothpick to just scratch the surface of the soil in that newspaper pot and that will kind of disperse the algae that's growing and produce some more air. But you plant it so the whole pot is below the so surface of the soil. So make sure that the top of the newspaper pot is not sticking up above the soil. If you do, it tends to wick moisture a well away from the soil. So it's a great activity using stuff you throw away. 
getting to plant your own stuff and then planting the whole pot. How much better is that? There it's, you go. And I've got the links in the corner there. Uh, Gardeners.com is where you can order those little wooden uh, uh, pot makers. And uh, Life Lab has uh, our friends again at Life Lab. They have a lesson write up of of this, um, so that you can um, you could do it for yourself. And Jennifer, being the industrious person that you are, you said, "Hey, couldn't I use other things that oh, like sure. muffin tins or uh, muffin, you know, or, or paper toilet paper rolls?" And sure enough, here's an example of this. Um, I'm gonna uh, see if I can. Um, show this on here let me let me see if we can get this to play uh laura found this on instagram this uh, uh we don't have to hear the music but basically you're cu cutting slits to flatten out the the roll and then that gives you a chance to square the bottom and lo and behold you have your seed starter pots i'll play it again so you can see squish cut <laughs> bend <laughs> And there's your pot. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, if, if you were if you were using like paper towel tubes, you could probably get three pots out of one paper towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing up. that I've done that I've done with these, in addition to planting seeds, would be to, for instance, anybody who grows strawberries know that they produce lots of baby plants called runners. So to have a, have a seed starting mix, moisten seed starting mix, and on all these things, um, and then to cut off a little baby strawberry runner. And if you look at the bottom of the strawberry runner, it's got some tiny little baby roots. Yeah. And, uh, so to yeah. just pin that, you can use some, some uh, you can open up a paper cliff to kind of pin those baby strawberry plants down in, and they'll root right in there. Um, and then you can plant your, you know, your strawberries that kids love together with the paper towel tube. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for mentioning that because, uh, yeah, the, the, runners, the runners are great for that um uh because they're just so easy they just come out so easily and they they just take to the soil very quickly so and again you have you're, your, 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 you have your instant plants so you don't have to purchase anything and you're planting in a renewable container and that's right what i love about these is that these as these decompose in the soil the toilet paper paper towel containers they're adding nutrients to your soil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're so enriching the soil so yeah so you're on a roll there you go. <laughs> oh, Rob, I'm not even going to enter into that. Thread. I'm doing really well today. So no, it's just, you're not thinking about it's just extemporaneous. Here it is. Yes. All right. So uh, this is a movie, a very powerful movie. If you have not, I wanted to take a moment to uh, share this. This is not necessarily, you know, for younger kids, but um, for your own uh, uh, knowledge and information, Kiss the Ground is an excellent movie that talks about the regeneration of soil and how this has become an issue and a process that will help us in the long run to save our planet, literally. And so you can uh, go to kisstheground.com to see it. Um, it. You know, it's it's live stream. It's not live stream. It's streamed, um, and I, it's really you know if you have to pay, it's very cheap. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot who, who uh, Woody Harrelson is the narrator. And it just talks about this notion of what soil is for us, how important it is, and how our practices with agriculture in particular, but also what we can do in our own backyards to replenish the soil and how that in turn uh, replenishes our planet. So um, this notion of regeneration is key to this. Judy, do you want to add more to that? Yeah, I do. I mean, you can see, you can actually see the difference in agricultural soil, which is plowed with heavy implements, which is a very, um, I don't want to say easy. It's the typical way that commercial agriculture is, is practiced. And if we look at the hands, those two hands on the right hand side of the slide, the left hand with that powdery stuff and very light color is usually what you see with commercial agriculture. It's devoid of life. That soil is so disturbed, it has destroyed a lot of the microorganisms that are responsible for healthy growth. Commercial people who grow farming, how many of us know corn, bean, and squash, and soybeans? Usually one or two crops are grown for large, for large enterprises, large agricultural firms, and that's called monoculture. So monoculture meaning one crop, 
um, is really dependent upon artificial fertilizer and pesticides because it doesn't promote biological diversity. It doesn't promote the pollinators coming in. It sees all insects as enemies. So plants actually put out chemical si signals that tell other plants if they're in a stressed condition. Monocultures or monocrops with just one crop put out signals if disease organisms come in. So farmers respond by applying more and more pesticides and fertilizers to get them grow. And it's a reductionist point of view, meaning it reduces the health of the soil, it reduces the options for pollinators. So that soil on the left is not fertile, is not gonna grow deep roots, has very little biological diversity. If we're partnering with nature, we're using things like cover crops, we're leaving roots in the soil, we're protecting the soil with mulches, we're encouraging children and other people to peek beyond the mulches and find that diversity. We're using flowers, diverse life forms to attract pollinators. It's a more holistic way of growing. So it really does, when we're talking about regenerating, we're talking about putting more back in the soil than has been taken out. So it's a very powerful system of, of going back to our ancestors, really. And I think you can see the difference between biologically alive soil on the right. You can see little bits of roots that have been left on the soil, in the soil, in the soil pardon me, sticks, um, just the whole effects of decomposition versus the sterility of large scale agriculture. Yes, and in the movie itself, they, they talk about um, an area in China. I mean, this is a this is an issue across the globe. We're losing our soil and the quality of our soil. And there was an area in China that they they showcase how it was rejuvenated. It didn't take very long to do that, which leads us to this idea of soil helping us grow our ability to nurture. That when we connect ourselves to that soil, that we learn what it means to care what it means to nurture. Judy, do you wanna add anything to that? Well, I mean, I've talked before about um, a young lady that I worked with in an elementary school who was not in a nurturing environment. And her, she responded by her lack of nurturing by doing everything she could to end up in the principal's office every day because at least she would get negative attention and she would be seen. And when I invited her to begin cultivating a garden space with us, each summer, it wasn't a real large piece. It was probably two by three. She intimately nurtured and took care and put compost in the soil and measured the growth of the sunflowers that she grew. And at the end of the season, she was able to say, she was able to write poems about not only the growth in the sunflower, but what standing and working and, and being there and, and caring for her piece of earth had done for her a whole life. So there is an intimate connection between our ability to, to care for Earth and Earth teaching us the lessons that we need um, in order to be the best humans. And, and one, of the, one of the ways that I love to work with kids in, in nature is to realize that it is, it's a holistic learning. It's not just what we get out, not just the food. It's the way it quiets our mind. It's the way it provides that feeling of peace, that feeling of centering. So it really is, if you will, a non-judgmental teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, forgive me, I got another pun. Go, oh, soil here. rocks, soil oh, rocks. Oh, here we go. <laughs> that brings us to. I know. Well, stay with me. Stay, you know, don't don't leave because we have a lot more activities. And Lisa, who's, uh, you know, I appreciate this group because they're on top of it. They're thinking through these things. Uh, yeah. Kiss the ground has offered a version for kids for schools, it's a free version that is now released. Uh, they're actually, Kiss the Ground is gonna produce more materials. Um, so stay tuned for that. There's a new film that they're in the, in the works of, of sending, of, of uh, distributing, but um, kissthegroundmovie.com slash four slash uh, hyphen schools to check that out. Um, Here's a fun activity. Um, I'll just go ahead and do this one, Judy, and you can chime in sure. afterwards. So um, you can see the links. There's a, I, I took these uh, screen grabs from a YouTube video. And then also uh, there's an opportunity 
opportunity, if you want to go on the Doug website into the youth education pages, you can, um, there's a page for you to download our curriculum. Uh, we have a curriculum for elementary grade levels all the way up to sixth grade, uh, different activities related to garden education and nutrition. Uh, this is a fun one called the Rotten Truth or compost bags. Basically, you will take scraps in a bag and uh, stick a straw in there to allow air to go in there, mix it up a little bit, and then let it sit for two to eight weeks. Laura, you you did this back in DC, right? Uh, you were able to have kids uh, come in and uh, uh, test this out. And, uh, and uh, how did they do, Laura? If you were able to come on the mic, tell me what... Tell me how that I meant. love the, I love this activity because the kids get to see the whole process <laughs> mm -hmm. and they get excited to see the, the the apple you know getting all the moss on top and then and then getting all small and then stinky um it's amazing I love it yeah and just to, you know because if you actually do the composting sometimes you know an actual compost sometimes it's hard for them to get a sense of what's happening but this is a really you know, vivid example of it. Is is there a smell to it? <laughs> I think you can answer that question, Lisa. <laughs> yes, very stinky, very stinky. Bianca uh, uh, Blanca is asking, should they should they be in the sun? They don't. Uh, they, I know. I have an answer, but Judy, do you want to? Yeah, go ahead. So no, they don't need to be in the sun. Um, when I've done this in classrooms, we've hung them up on a wall. Um, and it's pretty interesting because we've varied the condition. We put food scraps in, um, a straw or, or open the bag, but then we also varied it by putting a tiny bit of soil in the bag, mm -hmm. in some of the bags to add some decomposer organisms in it. In the, and we also varied it by sprinkling some water in or spraying water, the conditions that organisms need to decompose. And so we did it varying by completely sealing the bag with no air, no soil, no water, and then adding those various conditions. Um, so that tends to keep down the odor a little bit just by adding a tiny bit of soil and adding, making sure that you're mixing it up, that you're opening it every once in a while or that straw. You can also do an adaptation where you're doing this, this gets into organic material decomposes, non-organic doesn't. So if it was living, it will break down. You can do a mix of materials like you can put, you can put, you can cut up plastic straws and put it in. You can put pieces of wood in, you can put food scraps, and then you periodically notice which which organisms or which which materials change. And at the end of the time, the kids are able to pick out oh, this started breaking down, why do you think? And then you can ask questions, why do you think this mm -hmm. started breaking down? Why did that not? Even if you use something like a pencil, then you can bring it back to the fact of a pencil comes from a tree and that will eventually break down. So there are ways of expanding their knowledge about mm -hmm. what breaks down and produces healthy soil. But I agree with Laura, this is a fabulous activity. Do and try. you can certainly, you know, facilitate this as an investigation, you yeah. know, what is your, you know, uh, how do you want to represent and show what uh, changes are happening? What kind of predictions do you have? What questions come up as we, you know, you know, as time goes by uh, and that question of like, do some things decompose faster than others is just a natural question that emerges. So it, it is a natural way for kids to become scientists, to, to ask questions and to investigate. All right, so lovely activity. Now it's time, we've sort of uh, went around looking at different uh, activities that you might want to, to try for yourself. So now we're gonna take a poll. I've listed the activities that we've done so far. And I'm going to um, I, I'm going to uh, launch the poll. Pick the ones that you would like to do so far. So I'll give you a moment. You should be seeing the poll on your screen there. Choose all the ones that you want. The pieces of soil. The second one was just having those stations with different types of soil. So um, go ahead and um, choose. Oh, it's so fun for me to see. Because I I can see it right now, people are are choosing, and it's still it's so it's so funny because everybody's choosing everything. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, 
Veronica is saying, la mayoría de la comida lleva el mismo tiempo de, de composición o depende de lo que echas allí. Laura, you want to add, do you want to respond to that one? Yeah, um, I think, creo que depende de lo que vas a poner en la bolsa, dependiendo de, eh, por ejemplo, una cáscara de banano, eh, se va a demorar menos que una, eh, no sé, una semilla de aguacate, por ejemplo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have a general sense of what you're at, you know, what, what the question is. Does it, it, it depend on, you know, the materials and all that? So, yeah, good question, Veronica. Gracias. So, everybody likes to paint rocks. That's, uh, that's fun. Toilet paper is, is a popular one. Oh, am I sharing the results? Here, let me share results. There, there we go. <laughs> You're like, why are you saying these things? We don't see them. The compost bags is popular, of course. They're all popular. Very good. Love it. <laughs> okay. Well, we have more activities though. So let's continue on. Uh, let me close the poll on my screen. Let's, oh, here we are with uh, one of our two books for this, uh, for this uh, uh, webinar, Carl and the Meaning of Life by Deborah Friedman. So uh, there's a video version of this. I included that in the link there. I'll, I'll make these slides available for you, um, uh, at, you know, when I send it out the link. So uh, we start with Carl, the earthworm. So Judy, I'll, I'll give you a chance to read this story of Carl and the meaning in life. Okay, so as I go through reading this, I want you to think of earthworms living below the soil and, and, and what they do for our soil. So as we know, Carl lives underground and he doesn't have much of a voice and he's, he's moving really slowly and he doesn't wear clothes or anything. And he's actually making tunnels. Look, he's tunneling and he's digging. And as he encounters things that he thinks are good to eat, he, they just come into his mouth. So rocks and leaves come through his mouth, move through his body and then move out his back end. And that's what he does day after day. So he goes through the hard soil and he makes tunnels and the soil comes in the front end and it comes out the back end. And what happens next, Rob? So anyway, he, he does this day after day and he doesn't, he doesn't question anything. So he, he takes stuff in his mouth. It passes actually through something called as a gizzard. And then it comes out as what we call earth castings. And as it comes out, his, his rear end, that soil changes and it changes from this hard rock-like thing into these fluffy mounds. And he just keeps doing the same thing. Doesn't question why he does it, that's, that's his life. And then suddenly he, he keeps doing that and something else happens. Will you change the slide or move on? Rob, can you? We are frozen. Rob, are you here? Uh -huh. Hello? Rob? Oh, okay. He's, I'm a very, yeah, I'm asked the field, why, why do you, okay. Oh, my internet okay, is unstable. No, so we, the screen we was frozen, go ahead. mine was, okay. So then come the questions. Remember, he didn't question anything beforehand. So he's starting, to question different animals that he meets. And one of them is, he, he starts asking, remember, he hasn't questioned why he's digging the soil. He asks a mouse who's constantly gathering seeds, why? Why are you gathering seeds? Why do you do that? Um, we're, we're missing some things, or maybe it's my computer. He meets, he meets different animals and he asks them what they do, and they just do what they do. Kind of like we take care of our kids. So the rabbit says, I don't know what I do what I do. I just do it. I just do it for my babies. And he meets a fox along the way. And he asks the fox, why do I do what I do? And who do I do it for? And the fox, I'm sure, is busy on the hunt. And the fox says, for whom? He corrects him. Alas, can't stay with you. My meal awaits. I'm just here for the hunt. So he's on the prowl. So as Carl goes on, he meets other curious animals, a deer that's probably munching grass, a squirrel who's gathering acorns, 
and a bat. I'm hoping he's not going to be a meal for the bat. And the, the bat is probably busy hunting insects. But Carl, it seems, has been away for a long time. So he heads on back, slowly crawling over. And he comes to the place where he thinks his burrow was. And he's moving his tail a little bit. And then he's looking and he sees a beetle. And we're going to find out what happens on the next slide with this beetle. Changes are in store. And the beetle is really sad. The beetle says, I'm turning over rocks. I can't find what I like to eat. That beetle is really sad. And there's no grubs. There's nothing to eat. And Curl himself peeks underneath the stone. Not a single thing to eat. That ground has become sterile. So Carl just goes back in the soil. The beetle's looking at him. And as he's going back in, he's doing what he did before. He's digesting soil. He's leaving behind the castings. He's tunneling. And as he's making the tunnels, that dirt that was hard is becoming fluffy again. So that little mouse who couldn't find seeds before is you says, you made my seeds grow, said the mouse. And other comments, how? Curl's still wondering how. And suddenly there are acorns around for the squirrel to harvest. And I'm looking at a difference in the soil where the acorns are. How? Look at the difference in that soil on the slide. Well, why not ask Curl? Carl is the And that is reason. the story of Carl and the meeting of life where Carl it really finds, is. Uh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, he bro. finds his purpose in life. <laughs> and you know, if you know he's a new age worm. These are really interesting facts. <laughs> go ahead, bro. <laughs> We, here we have a, a as since we're speaking about soil, I thought oh, so. If you imagine the layers in the soil, uh, how about a healthy seven-layer dip? Uh, this dip consists of various layers, and you start with refried beans, and then you put a layer of green a Greek yogurt uh, mixed with a little taco seasoning. You stir that in. So the bottom layer is refried beans, then the yogurt. Add a layer of guac then salsa and cheese and other veggies. Uh, you can put tomatoes like they have on this picture and uh, shredded lettuce. And there you have your seventh uh, layer, healthy seven layer dip. It looks really tasty, right. doesn't it? What a yeah. great way of incorporating veggies into diets that kids don't mm -hmm. even know. Mm -hmm. And also saving you money. How many of us have gone out to stores and gotten you know, supplies of seven layer dip or something like that pre-made? Um, <laughs> And now, so we have time for one more book here. We uh, do. We have a few more activities, but we've got one more time. This is one of our favorites, Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner, illustrated by Christopher Silas Neal. Now, you know, stay tuned because we've, we're have we going to make these available for a, a, a lovely drawing at the end of our webinar. So let's let's start this story. Would you like me to do that, Rob? Um, do you want? I'll do it. How would I do it? Okay. So um, up in the garden, I stand and plan, my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams. How about I'll read a few pages and then we'll alternate. How about we'll that? We'll alternate. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So down in the dirt, my favorite place, is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects digging, just like Carl, and building, <laughs> stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. And, and before we go on, I'd like to encourage you that to get down in the soil with your kids. If you want to get your kids into gardening, you have to look at what goes on down below. Because mm -hmm. very often what goes up above the soil is a function of what goes down, down below. If you can get your, your kids enthralled with bugs and worms and ants, um, you got them growing above ground. And maybe reading this book ahead of time will get them excited to do it, you know. And then so, you need to go on scavenger hunts and you can find some of That's right, that's right. right. There you yeah. go. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rusty armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. 
and then down in the dirt, my favorite place. You want to get kids into gardening, turn over the leaves, turn over the straw, turn over the moldy stuff, and you find the roly polies. Pill bugs, roly polies, chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor, roly poly round. So this is a wonderful way of celebrating seasons too, because as you may have realized, as we go through different parts of this book, it goes through different things that kids can visually see in the garden and find in the garden at different times of the year. So it brings out that whole notion that a garden is not just for springtime, but is for all seasons of the year. And it's a discovery haven all seasons of the year. Yeah, and Laura just mentioned that uh, her kids at Garden Club found five worms. So that was Great. a banner day for them. <laughs> Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. You can see the aphids are the little white on that, right by the ladybug, those little white insects there. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Ah, one of my favorite pictures. I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Only I might mention where, if the soil is healthy. Roots <laughs> creep in, and a long-legged spider. Can you see the spider? It's towards the middle of that blue stream, not far from the boy down. Long-legged spider still walks over the stream. So this is a great picture for showing the depths of roots and yeah, it's a good organisms that live yeah. in the soil. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Up in, up in the garden, carrots, plants, sprouts, pea blossom bloom, wasps are on the prowl, and honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. Oh, look at our earthworms down there and with the carrots there. Yeah, and I would encourage you to start looking out in the garden in among piles of wood out in my garden today. I found two native bees that were out foraging on early spring bulbs, mm. getting the nectar. So they are out now. Something else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. I would like to import that garter snake to my garden. <laughs> to get the grasshopper. To crunch on <laughs> grasshoppers. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Caitlin, this is up in the garden and down in the dirt. So up in the garden, the wind grows cool, pumpkins blush orange, and sunflowers bow to September. So now we're in a different season. Mm. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. She's got a sunflower house there uh and they've got a nice reading book oops ah and then another season okay and then down in the dirt we must be in autumn oops an or weaver spider spins her web look at that wonderful thread that happens in fall strand by silken strand she'll munch on moths tonight so as those pumpkins are ripening lots of life happens in the garden at the end of the season when grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry cornstarks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkered down, hiding, biding their time. Uh-huh. And they're dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts. Under the bare arms of trees and the blanketing snow, a whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. So we've got all the seeds that have gone down. We've got the native bees down there that are producing their tunnels and just waiting for that new season to arrive. Also breaking down that soil into fertile growing areas for next year. It's a great book. I love this book. It is a lovely book. And you know, the artwork is so amazing for this and for Carl uh, and the meaning of life. But these, there's so much going on in, in this from observation skills with your students. So um, uh, one teacher, I just happened to stumble across this. They use the book, you can see on the left here. Uh, interesting enough, it's, it was immersion school. I just took a screen grab of this from a blog post. 
the teacher had took that picture, you know, with the bees and the carrots and the earthworms. And she had her students wonder about things they noticed in the picture. What do you wonder about? What does it make you notice? What kinds of questions do you come up with? And so they typed the answers in French. And then once they had their wonderings, they were then uh, encouraged and inspired to make a painting of, of their own showing up in the garden and down in the dirt. So you can see in the bottom picture, they, they, you know, they first started with the top of the, uh, you know, where all the flowers grow. And then they used uh, the other piece of paper to show what happens down in the dirt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, Bev. Yeah, so great book. Here's another activity. You know, uh, we'd be remiss in not talking about roots because that's such a significant thing uh, when we're talking about soil. So we've got this, uh, this is another activity in the Doug curriculum, how to, how to do the carrot tops in particular, but you can do this with all kinds of vegetables. Judy, you wanna talk about this one? Yeah, so if you're doing it with carrots, it's best to utilize organic carrots from the supermarket that already have tops on them or that mm -hmm. are starting to sprout. And you basically cut the top of the carrot out and you can see it's got off, you can see it's got some toothpicks in and that's basically so that the carrot doesn't sink directly in the water. You put it in a small glass of water and because the carrot has got food supply in its roots, it has sugars and starches, it's enough food for a small crop of new growth, new green leaves to happen after, and you will very often see bottom rooting going on with the carrot. All these activities that are shown with different plants, they will not grow a complete new plant after the supply of food is, is utilized fully in the top of the carrot or on the right in the top of the celery, or we've got some, or yeah, celery in both the top right and the bottom left, or we have a picture in the middle, mi the middle on the bottom of some, uh, a type of cabbage. Um, so it's utilizing the bottom part of that plant, which has got the ability to, to form new, leaf, new roots, and then getting a certain amount of growth. You can even do it with uh, basil, some shoots of basil, the bottoms mm, that will root yeah. in some water. Um, and then you can extend that with the basil by planting it again in some soil. So it's a great way inside your classroom of showing that new life um, comes from plant parts. You know, sometimes it's called, you know, garbage growing or garbage botany. Um, of just spending no amount of money, but showing kids the way plants grow from things that we would normally throw out. And then I think another way of extending that is, is to utilize those green leaves of carrots and, um, and celery and cabbage, whatever, in, in a soup that you'd make. Yeah. And I had a conversation, this is a while ago, but about that term of garbage garden. And, you know, and one of the things we're trying to reframe, though, is, is this really garbage? You know, I mean, it's, you know, you can actually utilize more of the vegetable than we really realize. And um, this is an example of showing, you know, that this is, you know, these are scraps. They're not, they're not garbage. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've got five more minutes. We want to make sure that um, we uh, get through all of our activities. Here's a recipe. Uh, this looks really good. Parmesan roasted carrots. You've got olive oil and garlic, and Parmesan, but the real crunchy ingredient is the panko breadcrumbs, a little salt and pepper and a little parsley for added, uh, added uh, measure. Um, and then you you toss all of that and spread and bake that for 400 at 400 degrees until 20 minutes. And then voila, you have the lovely Parmesan roasted carrots. Oh, I uh, Riley, uh, uh, thank you for for pointing that out. You can uh, use the avocado pit. I tried that when I was a little kid and yeah. boy, you know, I can't remember how many avocado pits I would try to grow and it takes a while for the avocado pits. So, <laughs> you know what, you know what so, else is interesting before you go on with the avocado pits, I've also done that with the cores of ooh. mangoes and you can get mango trees started that way too. Yes, I know. Uh, uh, we have a gardener in a, uh, in the horse barn who's trying to grow, I think, a mango tree. Yeah. There so um, I just thought it'd be fun because I'm, you know, I'm a man of puns today. Which <laughs> root are you rooting for? So uh, I'm going to give you a poll. I know. I'll give you a poll. 
which is your favorite root vegetable? So I'm going to launch the poll. Is it carrots? Is it beets? Is it turnips or radishes? Which is the winner for today of your favorite root vegetable? Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to give you a few more time. <laughs> turnips and radishes aren't having a lot of love right now. So, you know, you, you quiet turnip and radishes lo radish lovers, you know, now's your chance to, you know, represent. <laughs> okay. For the sake of time, I'm going to end the poll. And we're going to share the results. It looks like carrots and beets are in a dead heat with one another. So uh, <laughs> that is our that is our poll for for rooting for roots today. Oh, Bev yeah. is saying that she uses onions. Yeah, um, that yeah. you know, I'm sure you've had an onion that actually was starting to grow on its own uh, on its own uh, accord. There. Here's another one. You know, another uh, activity with soil. You know, we. We can't forget the bugs. I just thought it'd be fun to look at different ways of 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 uh, taking a look at bugs. Certainly, you know, a little uh, bug key catcher uh, where you have the magnifier on the top, so that you don't, you know, it's it's there to for you to be able to view the bugs, the insects, but not to harm them. And it's got a magnifier on the top. There are simple um, uh, viewer magnifier fires that you can get. This one was like, I don't know, like $15. It wasn't, wasn't that expensive. And it connects into a USB cable. Or if you want to spend a little more money, uh, there's these stem, stem scopes and uh, they magnify 20 to 40 times. They're cheaper ones. Uh, these are about like $40. So they're like expensive, but there's cheaper ones that are like half the price. I just thought I'd throw those in. And, and the Doug curriculum also has a, uh, uh, a, um, uh, bug uh, uh, the bug patrol lesson. Oh, Veronica, your your, <laughs> your son really likes to grow the scrap vegetables. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, you're welcome, Tabitha. Uh, we're almost done, so you know, let's. Uh, we've got our final poll. Um, so, uh, whoop. Let's put that poll out there for you. Um, I'm uh, wondering what your favorite. Oh, let me stop sharing this. Okay. Oh, um, let me. Oh, sorry. Don't mind that man behind the camera. Okay. Here are the other activities from the second half. Carl and the meaning of life, the recipe, the seven layer dip, rooting for roots or bugs. Dun, 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 dun. We'll let you. Oh, the books are popular. The books are always popular, aren't they, Judy? <laughs> okay, let's stop and share the results. Oh, everybody likes them. Yay. Well, I, that that makes me happy because I uh, that means I hit the mark of uh, activities that are meaningful and interesting and things you'd like to try. So, uh, you know, do try them and let us know how they work. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, that would be great. Okay, so... Um, there are resources at Doug. We're, we're now uh, finishing up. If you can just hang in for a couple more minutes. Um, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, the Educational Carrot, we have monthly uh, a newsletter online uh, that can send you ideas. Uh, as we mentioned, you can download the curriculum for free. Um, we have uh, Farmer Dave and Friends. Our uh, Farmer Dave has just been a, a great friend of ours who has made these videos about the garden that go with songs. Uh, featuring uh, one of our favorite educators, Miss Miss Zia, and uh, speaking of Miss Zia, you can also see her on our YouTube channel, our Zia Tube channel, uh, <laughs> and other videos for gardening. So be sure to check out those resources um, on on the website. It's time for the drawing, and what we're going to do. Oh, you're welcome, Blanca. Um, so um, the so we're going to have a drawing for. Uh, whose uh, birthday is closest to Judy's. So type in the chat when your birthday is. Judy, don't chime in and tell us what your birthday I is yet. I have not so, seen anything. Yes, not, don't say a word, drum roll, drum roll. And uh, the, the two people that are closest will get uh, a book of their choice, either Carl, or up and down. And you know, if if you want a Spanish option, you know, we could try to see if we can get one of those too. I'm not sure, but um, if you're interested in that, you know. Okay, so we have January 6th, Leticia, 
Tabitha is September 9th, and <laughs> you're hedging your bets, Tabitha. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Laura, no, you can't participate no, this time, Laura. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. This Daisy's December 3rd. Laka's April 8th. Uh, Jennifer's February 20th. Oh, you just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Bev's August 17th. Caitlin is November 4th. And Lisa is August 7th. So Judy, who is closest? Who are the two that were closest? Well, I'll let you pick the two, but I will tell you that my birthday is October 17th. Uh, October 17th. So you know who it is? It's Daisy and Marisol. So Daisy, uh, which one would you like, to, is, I'm sorry, am I reading your name correctly? Because I don't have my glasses on there. You can either get on the mic or type in the chat. Which book would you like? And if you want it in Spanish, let me know because I can I can see if I can get it, so. The up, up, up in the, the garden? garden? Yeah, if you okay. can have it in Spanish, it would be great. Okay, all right, perfect. So um, let me see. Oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. Um, <laughs> Very nice. Okay. And then Soledad, which book would you like? Or Marisol, I'm sorry. Marisol. You can type in the chat or go on the mic there. Are you there? Hello. Maybe you're on mute. Well, we'll wait to hear, or maybe I'll just read out, reach out to Marisol. And uh, we'll see what book we can get. But Daisy, we'll get you that up in, in the garden and I'll see if I can uh, get it with uh, in Spanish. So um, I'm gonna send out the, the link to, um, there you go, yeah. Thank you for helping Blanca. Uh, there's a survey, we'd love to get your feedback. And as always, thank you so much for joining us. This was really fun today. So thank you for, for your time. And uh, yeah, we'll find out which one. Uh, which one? If if somebody wants to email me uh, 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 and let me know which one, Marisol. Uh, yo, wants, Marisol? Uh, we'll make sure. Which one do you want, Marisol? ¿Qué, qué libro? Or, uh, okay. ¿Cuál libro? ¿Cuál, ser, ¿Cuál estará mejor? Ahí está, escójame uh, uno que crea que es el bueno. El de Up and Down está bonito, Marisol. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we'll stop the recordings because people don't want to hear about it. <laughs> so let's stop the recording and uh...